You know it. We know it. Next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success for 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with a comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. They'll help you whip up assets and execute tasks that used to take hours out of your workday. HubSpot Sales Hub lets you accelerate every facet of your sales operation with precision. And with over 1,400 integrations, there are tons of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com slash sales. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, March 10. I'm Juliet bennett Ryla here with Mark Dent, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to talk about Girl Scout cookies. Everyone loves them, but a series of unfortunate events has left too many troop members unable to meet their cookie selling goals while resellers are trying to get $35 a box on eBay. We'll get into that, but first let's take a look at what else is going on in the world of business and tech. Microsoft said Bing has crossed the 100 million daily user mark. Now, Microsoft recognizes that this is quite small compared to competitors like, say, Google, saying, we are fully aware we remain a small, low, single-digit share player. That said, it feels good to be at the dance. Well, I think that getting 100 million is actually a bigger deal than even their press release says. I was like looking, I was like, okay, so Google must have three or four billion daily users, but they only have like one billion. Mm. And I don't know, I didn't expect that Bing would be one-tenth of that. Like that actually sounds really good. Yeah, they're being pretty modest, I think, considering how many people are using Bing who haven't used Bing in years. (laughs) In history. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So GM is offering voluntary buyouts to a majority of its 58,000 corporate employees in a $2 billion cost-cutting effort. The program is open to any salaried U.S. employee who has been with GM for five years or more as of June or for two years if outside the United States. In February, global venture capital funding fell to $18 billion, the first sub-$20 billion month since February of 2020. And in other news, if you love classical music, Apple's new dedicated classical music app could be for you. It launches March 28 for Apple Music subscribers with over 5 million tracks, including new releases, curated playlists, and composer biographies. Or you could just watch the movie Amadeus, which is actually very good if you want a Mozart movie. Very solid. Yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, Discord launched three new AI experiences. Clyde is a conversational chatbot. Automod AI alerts moderators to possible rule violations. And conversation summaries does, uh, well, it does that. It (laughs) sums up your conversations for you. And finally, in Anianta, Alabama, Mayor Richard Phillips has gone viral for his TikTok videos, pranking city colleagues, doing dances, etc. His TikTok presence is even attracting tourists who want a selfie with him. According to the Wall Street Journal, he has over 117,000 followers, or I should say the city account he manages does. Now, the town's population is only about 7,000, so that's about 17 viewers per resident. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of this story because while like the rest of the government is trying to figure out ways to untether from TikTok, you know, they're just jumping in and the police chief had this amazing quote to the Wall Street Journal where he said, what's the Chinese government scene from the Oneonta Police Department that's going to help them? Yeah. (laughs) And it's so true. Yeah, I think I actually saw one where the mayor asked the police chief if he could have a tank to ride around in. Yeah. Which, uh, do they even have a tank? I feel like they're too small. They probably don't. He said that they had an armored car that the mayor could use. So they they do have something. Oh, Oh, that's like some military intel then. TikTok knows they have one armored car. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm wrong. We're um, we're definitely still screwed here. (laughs) All right. So now we are going to talk about cookies. Yes. So Juliet, every year around this time, Girl Scouts, they sell famous cookies, Thin Mints, Samoas, Caramel Delights, Peanut Butter Patties. How much of these cookies are they typically selling and and how much money are they making? Well, according to a podcast with our own Zachary Crockett that I listen to, I learned that they sell about 200 million cookies every year, which brings in about $800 million, which, of course, they use to fund their activities and programs. Yeah. And they're so popular 
that other cookie companies kind of like give up this time of the year, mm-hmm. right? Like they kind of get rid of some of their marketing. It's just a pretty crazy time. But right. this year here in 2023, it hasn't been going quite as smoothly. And part of that has to do with how the the cookies are made. How are they made? What's going on? So back when the first cookies were made, the troop members baked them themselves. And this is in 1917. Mm -hmm. But as this fundraising effort scaled, it no longer became feasible for you to bake your own cookies in your own kitchen with your mom. So now, today, we have two commercial bakers that handle all of the Girl Scout cookies. We've got ABC Bakers. They make about 25% of the cookies. And we've got Little Brownie Bakers. They are owned by Ferrero, the Italian company that makes the little chocolates and the little gold foil balls. I'm sure you're all familiar with. Huge company. They're based in Kentucky and they make 75% of the cookies. So the lion's share of the cookies are all made there. Okay. So what's going on with these two companies? Are they just not making enough cookies right now? Are they not meeting demand? So ABC is great. Everything's going great. Little Brownie Bakers, they... um, seem to be cursed this year. They're having all sorts of issues, supply chain issues, labor shortages. And then earlier this week, there was some really bad weather that knocked out the power in Kentucky where they make the cookies. So they have been unable to produce as many cookies as expected. They have still produced a lot of cookies and Ferrero has maintained that it is still on track to meet the initial orders. But many Girl Scouts are complaining that they can't meet their goals when it comes to sales because there are just not enough cookies being made and available. Yeah, I saw the, you know, in the CNB story about this, that there are, you know, some flavors, uh, thin mints, mm-hmm. some of those are, are still fine. And, and that, you know, Little Brownie Bakers is even pushing back a little bit by saying that they've actually produced more so far this season than they had last season mm-hmm. at this point. So in some ways, they're performing up to maybe the expectations they thought there'd be. It just seems like Girl Scout cookies are even more popular. Yes. And one thing that happened is... There is a new flavor this year. It is Raspberry Rally. It has a raspberry center. It's chocolate coated. It is new. It's limited edition. It's being marketed as the sister to the Thin Mint. And everybody loves the Thin Mint. I feel like that is the most popular Girl Scout cookie. Now, because it's new, it's selling out like crazy. It's sold out online. Typically, that would be between $4 to $7 per box. But now... People are on eBay reselling boxes of this new flavor for up to five times as much. I looked at the eBay listing. Some are $35 for a single box of Girl Scout cookies, which unless this is like a middle schooler who just hoarded all of the boxes of cookies her troop got and she's doing this, I'm going to guess it is someone who is trying to make a profit off of these cookies and that this extra profit will not be funding any merit badges this year. So for these resale cookies... I guess that they were originally purchased by somebody from the Girl Scouts. But now, as far as we know, it's just somebody on eBay trying to make an extra buck in in what might be one of the, uh, you know, a a very kind of sad way to think about (laughs) resale. Yes. It's like the saddest scalping I've ever heard. Like Taylor Swift tickets, whatever. I mean, she's very rich. I guess she doesn't need the extra money. But like now you're out there grabbing up Girl Scout cookies. I don't know. That's a bad hobby. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and thinking about that raspberry cookie, I think I was seeing that people are making comparisons to literally like Beyonce tickets, not wow. in terms of price, thankfully yet, <laughs> but like in terms of the actual demand for them that is not being met, that it is on par with Beyonce. Wow. So those new raspberry cookies, which I have not tried yet, Mm-mm. I mean, they must be really good. I wonder that. I wonder if they are really good or if it's just like this idea of demand, because I have seen similar crazes for food that I am certain cannot be good. Yeah. Like, wasn't there a Szechuan sauce that some fast food chain had? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It might have been McDonald's, I think. Yeah. And it was just because of like an episode of Rick and Morty talked about it. And all of a sudden, everyone wanted this sauce. But like, how good could a sauce from McDonald's really be is my question. Yeah. I I never had that one either. (laughs) Same. Okay. So we have incredible demand. We have resale going on on the internet by who knows who's selling these cookies, you know, that are going for 30 to $35 now on eBay. Mm -hmm. What are the Girl Scouts doing about it? Are they recommending anything for their fans, for people who want to stay true and actually help out Girl Scout troops? Yeah. So what they are suggesting is that you buy from your local Girl Scout troop. 
if you go to their website, you can enter your zip code. You can find where your local Girl Scout troop is. You can also order cookies online, but a lot of the supply chain issues, a lot of the shortage issues will be online. So you're actually better off just finding your local neighborhood Girl Scout and saying, hey, do you have this flavor that I like? Or going to where you know they're going to post up. I feel like that's usually in front of the grocery store. And um, yeah, just buy the cookies the way that you used to in the good old days. Yeah, I kind of like that, the low-tech solution. Mm -hmm. Wait for someone to come by. Yeah, and you know what? If you want to give your local Girl Scout $35 for a box of chocolate-covered raspberry cookies, even if she's selling them for $4, I bet she probably wouldn't mind. (laughs) I think that would be better than the eBay route. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. And we'll catch you all next week. I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Puri. My First Million features famous guests like Alex Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.